Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Acts chapter 3 verse 9 as well as Ruth chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word Lord Jesus. Thank you for truth and hope and love and light which comes only from you Lord God. Help us to reflect these things in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Acts chapter three, verse nine, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. All right. And so this is the man who was healed. Um, Peter, I want to say Peter and John had pulled him up and he began leaping and walking and praising God and everybody saw him right? And this was a miraculous miracle to them because they knew of this man um, who was by the gate called Beautiful and they knew that he, you know, was crippled from birth, right? And they had always seen him. So they were amazed at the fact that he was up and praising God. And so I felt like the thing the Holy Spirit was saying was that this man, um, it's it's just like us, right? When we have encountered God, we will be healed, right? So um, when we have truly encountered God in our life, we'll be healed. We'll be able to move and move forward in our lives. And our actions of, of living and walking and praising God are going to reflect to others and draw them to him, right? When we have received something great from God, we should be giving something great back to him because we owe him. No, but because he is a great God, um, we can never repay the goodness that God has bestowed upon us in the healing of our bodies. Our, our praise is not adequate enough, but if we could just get a chance to give him some praise just because he's such a good God and he did this great thing for us and he is mighty and he is worthy and he is powerful and he has saved our souls even beyond this healing right? God is awesome. We could never thank him enough. We could never praise him enough, but we can give him glory, not be ashamed of it in front of men. And, and it can cause them and their hearts to be drawn towards him. They, they can begin to tear their garment. I mean, tear their hearts and not their garments. And they can see that God is true and he's real and he is loving and he has done this thing and they can be drawn to him remember if he be lifted up he will draw all men unto him all right and so um the second scripture that the lord gave me was ruth chapter 4 verse 12 and may your house be like the house of perez whom tamar bore to judah because of the offspring that the lord will give you by this young woman all right, and so these are the witnesses to the contract um, of the marriage of Boaz and Ruth. And so these people are blessing them, right? They are speaking um, positively about this union and they are blessing it, right? Um, if we are living lives um, that give glory to God, what can people say except to bless us? What can people do except to bless us? What can they come against us with if we are living godly? Because remember, Ruth was a virtuous woman and the people could see that because number one, she was still taking care of Naomi, even though she didn't have children, she didn't have any reason to, she was taking care of her mother-in-law and she was out in those fields sweating and, and, and just out there, right? And she didn't have to be, and the people could see that, right? They could see that she was a woman of wealth. She was a woman of riches, a woman of greatness, all within her. And so it says, may your house be like the house of Perez. They were saying, hey, unlikely woman, unlikely um, blessed woman of God, you are going to be the breakthrough. Because remember, Perez means breakthrough in Hebrew. 
And so they are saying you have broken through, you've gotten through something, right? So it says you may your house be like the house of breakthrough. Wow. Whom Tamar bore to Judah. Um, this unlikely woman who had come into this um lineage, this line in an unlikely way. Right. And it says, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman, meaning that God's blessing is on your house and he is going to cause your house to be fruitful. And so that is the blessing that the people are speaking upon him. What else can they do except prophesy when the spirit of the Lord is on them to bless this woman? What else can they do, right? She has lived her life. She has um, proven her love for um, God and having the spirit of God in her by her action. Right. And so what else can they do but bless God? Right. What else can they do but bless this union? This was not a likely thing. Remember, she was a foreigner. Right. And so, you know, Jewish people are not really down for that. They're not really, you know, into that. And so the fact that they supported this thing was proof that God was blessing this God was on this God was with this and he did a mighty thing in this household and so um just like the men at the gate called beautiful he was doing the actions showing that he had been blessed right he was doing the 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 blessed actions that come after healing has taken place, after this encounter has taken place. And so remember, this would be more like um, a person who has has cleansed themselves after um, something has taken place, after a sickness, after something bad. So that would be more like an unwise bride, right? Who knows? We know that it wasn't his sin because he had done, he was born like this, but maybe his parents, right? And so in that way, um, he, he was praising God after the fact right after he had um received this beautiful healing right and so with with Ruth she would in this case represent the wise right right because she had been um doing the work right she had been out there doing that work first and then she was blessed, right? And then she was rewarded. And then she was spoke well of. And then all this goodness and prophecy over her and her lineage um, would come, right? So you have the one who um, who was dancing and praising after the healing, right? And and then you have the one who is being blessed after the woman. Right. So we know that um, during tribulation, um, those who have cleansed their garments, they're going to receive great um, love and devotion from the Lord when they get to that thousand year reign. They are going to be blessed, but it's going to be a blessed after the fact, right? After um, they're going to be healed and then they're going to be praising God, right? Um, but the first they experience the the sickness, the sadness, the the length of, of um, time where they are um, down and out and, and going through something, right? Begging, waiting. We know that the people of the tribulation are under the altar and they are begging and they are waiting for vindication, right? And so in that same way, um, this man at the gate is, is, is representing this bride who has gone through tribulation, but there was praising God at the end. Why? Because there was a cleansing that took place. There was a, a healing that took place and God did it. Amen. 
All right. And in the same way, the the bride who who has made herself ready, who has been diligent in her work, who has been out in the field, who has been taking care of the widow, she is the one who is blessed after the fact, right? She has done all this work and then she is blessed. Her ending is blessed as well. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you are helping us to um, be a part of this bride and causing us to be a part of this bride through your death and also through just the, your sparing of us from this trial, Lord. We praise you. We ask you for it. We thank you for it, Lord God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise and we know that you are there for us. You see us and you're causing us to triumph. God, help us to continue on until the end. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer, you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption, and no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way, and he's going to bless you abundantly. Um, go forth and allow him to lead you and guide you. Um, one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down and chew on his word, Talk to him about it, ask him questions about it, and learn to wait on him as he begins to um, speak to your heart and, and draw you closer to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, so diligently seek him, and he is going to um, open up his voice to you, open up his his heart to you, and answer your prayers. Um He's going to lead you and guide you to a church home, um, also a place where you can go and get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. He's also going to um, make, make disciples of all men through you. He's going to show you how to do that. Um, he's also going to show you other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.